All right, let's uh, continue on with um, the Three Days of Gettysburg from GMT 2004. Yeah, yeah, 2004. All right, so we have played up to the, we're going to start the 1300 game turn. Um, let's take a quick look at casualties here. Not that it has an effect yet, but as you see with one of the event chips, I drew the one, the random events where Hill gets sick for three turns, so he's Anderson, R. Anderson has his uh, division right now, or his core, until 1400 when he'll come back to good health, I guess. All right, so the Confederates, you figure there is, let's see, 15, 16, 17, 18, so cut in half, there's 900 casualties. Yeah, 50, I think it's 50 per strength point, so that's 900 casualties right there on them. And that's pretty much just Heath. Yeah, that actually, that is all Heath. Um, the Union, all right, so First Corps, Wadsworth, I think Robinson took a hit. So they've got, what, 500, 650. All right, the Cav has lost 350, and they've lost a couple of guns. Um, but they're still holding. You know, aren't the First Corps got into, the First Division First Corps, they got into line. Um... I put two brigades of Heath into attack mode and they were successful in breaking the edge of the line right here. Uh, they took a little bit of a beating for it. I'm telling you, Davis, his, those two green brigades he's got right there, they're both, once they're disrupted, they're, their cohesion is a one. I mean, it's, I've tried to recover uh, the one underneath that attack right there, I've tried to recover him twice and ended up losing a step both times, or losing a strength point both times. So it's almost like, shoot, just let him go into disruption and get up there and shoot. Um, Brock and Brow, Brock and Borrell, I know there's a special way to pronounce that, but he's out here on the left in front of Robinson, and he calls a couple casualties on Robinson's brigade right there. Um, He's now in attack posture, so all of Heath's division, yeah, I've, I've actually started the 1300 turn just up into the phase where you assign orders. So uh, all of Heath is in attack order. I'm going to get Archer moving over here. Um, Pender, I took Pender out of March order last turn, and he had four activations. Pender's a plus one. Dorsey Pender's a good commander. So he was able in advanced mode to move all the way around. Um, I haven't put them in attack mode because it's going to cut their movement down and I need these guys to move. I need the rest of them. To, I mean, I could have put the one brigade in attack mode. I probably should have, but I'm, I'm going to take a shot like it is in case they need to move out of there real quick because uh, Doubleday or Rally's division, the third division, is coming up. And, of course, their lead unit there, they got punished. They took 100 men loss from uh, on Pender's fourth activation. These two units sitting right here. We're within two hexes, and they so they fired prepared, and you know plus the rifle muskets of two hexes. So he chased them off with two losses. So that's a hundred men right there gone. And now the rest of Penders, you'll see they're already to fatigue level zero because they used all four activations. Um, Rhodes has come on, and I'm just going to go ahead and use what they list. I'm not using the the randomness right down where they come in at. You know, terrible swift sword. They all come in right here. But I decided to use what was on the reinforcement chart. So, and boy, poor Rhodes. His brigade leaders suck. So, the, I mean, both Iverson and O'Neill are on the board, and they're minus twos, you know, for their brigades. So, Iverson's here coming in off of the top of Oak Hill, and he'll be followed on this turn by Daniel. O'Neill is over here. I think O'Neill, doesn't O'Neill have sharpshooters? Yeah, isn't that sharpshooters right there? No. I know he's got so I thought the 5th Alabama Battalion was sharpshooters. I thought the, yeah, they are sharpshooters. There's the SS right there. Uh, and he'll be followed by Ramzor and Dole, along with Yule. Um, 11th Corps, see shirts. Uh, I've taken him out of uh, march orders this, this phase, so he, he's in advance orders. He'll go into line. I've moved, moved Buford off, and he, of course he's suffered... Fatigue is you end up having to use uh, an additional activation for him to get him out of the way, and he'll just prep for early. The Barlow's division, he's still in march order um, because Howard didn't draw. I think he drew a two. 
Yeah. So he'd have never been able to probably even, well, he'd have probably been able to clear town, but I think we're going to leave him in March order, which is going to be jacked up if that gets drawn before um, Schertz does. And then Von Steinware, he's, he's chugging up the road down there. So uh, the Union doesn't get any reinforcements this turn. And matter of fact, I think for a good part of the rest of the day, this is what they have to fight with. So let's see, I was, I was struggling with the artillery activation rules. But I finally, after reading it enough in the scenario book, I got a, I got a grasp on that, you know, whether or not the artillery is attached to a command um, or whether they're activating underneath the core. You know, like I think you have Hunt and then you have, is it Pendleton, I guess? If, if you use the artillery thing or the artillery and you activate them, they can activate any artillery within their range. Um, if you have artillery attached to a division or to a unit uh, and they've got a commander they'll act as just like another brigade commander uh, for that you know within so like if if you know I'd like for the start here those batteries of Pete Pegram is attached to Heath so when Heath activates he activates like another brigade and he's got more of his guns coming on right now um, so I'm gonna end up you know, he, uh, of course, the Confederates each each division has their their own artillery with them. So, Pender's got artillery attached to his division right there. Heath is right here coming up the road. They've been activating when Heath activates, so they haven't gotten very far. So it was it kind of confusing, but I think I have a grab on that right now. Um, somebody give me a, a real tight explanation of how to apply activations to them to make sure I'm not messing it up. Okay, so we're going to we're going to move on to the 1300 game turn or 1400 game turn. Let me see what we got over here. The 1400 game turn. This has actually moved along pretty good. Consider start at 7 o'clock or 0700. Um, it gets a little slower with each one because the more that gets on the board. And then you know you're going to have early coming in I imagine over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, because there's uh, one of Jenkins Cav units comes on the, the map this turn. And um, I guess that was just a lead element coming out. I always thought that guy, though, came in with Yule. I thought Yule had a cavalry detachment with him at Gettysburg, like maybe 100 men or something like that. All right, so starting to develop. You can see the black X's I drew on the map. Those are the objectives for the Confederates. And then, you know, you have your manpower stuff that you can use for, like, how many brigades are combat ineffective, you know, on one side. Or the other side can cause cause a victory to it, the opposite side. Um, but outside of that, the Confederates have these objectives right there, and down Cemetery Ridge, uh, down there, about where the swale would have been before it started to climb up to the little round tops. There's three there, and then of course there's two up there on the little round top. And I think there's one. Yeah, there's an entry hex down there. And they snatch that. Um, Union victory doesn't go into effect till, was it like after the 1500 game turn on day two or something like that? All right, so anything, this is how this is developing. Um, should start to get interesting here around McPherson's Ridge. Should be a lot of fighting here shortly. And then we'll just see how effective roads can be in this area here against uh, the 11th Corps. Uh, I tell you what, the, uh, the 1st Division, Iron Brigade, and actually, you know, the 2nd Brigade, too, they're tough. Their morales are tough, and of course, artillery cohesions are tough anyhow. So they were, like I say, they were able to make the right side back off. They're, they're not just, they did collapse a brigade or a regiment. Um, where's he at? Yeah, he's hidden somewhere underneath one of these units. But they do have a collapsed regiment already. So, and so do, uh, so does, yeah. Uh, there's one on each side, actually. And of course, that's going to be Jeff, Jefferson Davis's uh, son. I guess that's his son or nephew or something. I don't know. But uh, he's got a collapse regiment too. So, all right. Like I said, the fighting's going to heat up now. Try to get. I'm got better getting the cannons into play this time. Although I, originally I had almost boo booed. I had moved these cannons up to within three hexes, and I remember placing the Union right there because one, it was a good spot, and knowing that those guns couldn't come up into that front of that high ground right there. So uh, it's limiting their cannon, it's limiting the Confederates' cannon firepower because they can only really, I mean, they can shoot from these two back hexes, but the, this unit over here, the 
the double stack of twos, they haven't been able to shoot at anything really. He's been able to shoot, and these guys have been able to shoot across this way. Um, of course, now their troops are in the way, so that's probably going to limit that. And they got more guns coming up. But I boo boo, and I've actually moved them up to the front there. And then I realized before I actually did it, I was like, oh, wait a minute, they can't go there. And they actually, from where they were, they put some fire on that battery right there, and they've caused two, uh, two, strength, two guns down. They've knocked two guns out of that battery right there. All right, so we're going to move on, play a few more turns, and get that posted. Um, like I said, if you like this stuff, uh, click the old like button. All right, give me some incentive here. And if you uh, want to keep up to date, click uh, subscribe and notify. That way you'll get updates uh, whenever I post something new. All right, thanks for watching. We'll get back to you soon.